my McDonald's, my documents, my property. The notion that property should be given the highest value emanates from the government of this country and the dominant culture here in this country. It declares that property can be worth more than people if the people in question are considered to not be as worthy. The worthiness thing being based on whether someone is in the same tribe, which can be based on a number of things. It could be race. It could be the way someone dresses or the way they carry themselves. Mannerisms. Assumed belief systems, for, you know, assuming it for whatever reason. It could be a whole slew of things. So, you know, basically this kind of mindset declares that you should be able to shoot somebody if they are a threat to your property. You know, again, unless they seem to be someone who's part of your tribe. And then in that case, they have more value than your property and you have to make a different decision, you know, than shooting them. Let me be perfectly clear, I am a Second Amendment defender. I'm against adding more regulations for, you know, our ability to get guns. I think people have the right to defend themselves. But I certainly don't think a bale of hay is worth more than someone's life. I don't think a Lamborghini is worth more than someone's life. If someone is not a threat to you directly in any way, they're merely a threat to your property, then, I mean, yeah, you have the right to apprehend them, stop them, threaten them, you know, whatever, but you don't have the right to kill them over it. If they're a threat to you, then fine, you have the right to defend yourself. When this country was first founded, our beliefs about property extended out to the most extreme. It, it said that you could own people. You know, we literally thought we could own anything. You know, eventually, after a civil war and a lot of deaths, we finally acknowledged that slavery was messed up and it was abolished. But even today, the notion of owning people still kind of exists. There's a lot of parents out there who still go by these traditional ways and the traditional ways of raising children for all intents and purposes is to look at them as property. There are husbands who treat their wives like property. Sometimes it's in the marriage vows. Many companies, for all intents and purposes, own their workers. Because even outside the workplace, these companies are given the right to control the way that people look, what they can say, where they can go, who they can associate with. And this is besides all the things that they're subjected to on the job for a wage that barely pays the bills. Sure, you can quit, but until you get another job where they can essentially do that same thing to you again, you have no way of sustaining yourself. So all in all, the mindset that finds so much importance in property is still pretty strong, you know, but in this case, it's being property of a company. Ownership and property are kind of the centerpieces of Western civilization. And let me be clear, the notion of property, the notion that we can own things outside ourselves, the notion that we can manipulate Anything around us any way we want is why we have modern medicine, technology, pretty much all the products we use on an everyday basis, the kind of housing we live in, many of the things we pride ourselves in as a Western civilization. The notion of property and all this manipulation has built a lot of things, quite obviously. Things that I admire, things that just about everyone admires. I mean, it's obviously why I'm even able to make this video and be on the internet and have all this, this really awesome interactions with people across the globe. I mean, you know, we've got amazing things, but it has also been the most destructive force this planet has ever seen. We eventually need to tone down what we do. We're going to have to be more selective in what we control and manipulate. I mean, you can label that any way you want, but it's inevitable that we need to make major changes or we're not really going to survive. Or, I mean, the few people that do survive and generations down the line, I mean, they're going to be living in miserable conditions. There are a lot of people out there. You know who you are. You can claim that you want to spiritually save people from degeneracy, sacrilege and heresy all you want and declare that those things are destroying the country. 
And there is people who aren't even religious. They're saying, oh, this stuff is destroying the country. We're, we've become too permissive. But it's all meaningless when put up against people who are actually trying to save our ability to thrive as a species in the future, as well as saving other life on this planet. Your stupid biblical spiritual war has done nothing to solve any of the problems we have. Nothing. Degeneracy, sacrilege, and heresy are meaningless. You're complaining about victimless crimes. You should maybe stop focusing on it so much. You may be right that civilization is starting to come apart, but it's not because of that. It's not because, oh, you're becoming too permissive. No, it's because capitalism is in the last stages before the fall, and we have a choice. We can do what is necessary to keep capitalism as a viable system, or we can continue doing things the way we've been, watching corporate America refine everything to the point where everything is sterile, and we get used to how sterile it is, and we get used to how almost perfect it is, while small businesses have no chance against it and they go under, especially as you add the quarantine situation into the picture. Yeah, we, and we watch all this stuff crumble away, you know, because trying to do anything about it is communism. Socialism. Look out, everyone. Well, what are we going to do? We, 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 we need to do something about this system that's crumbling before our eyes. No, no, no. It's, it's the immigrants and it's the LGBT community and it's, it's the activism. It's, it's, it's the racial activism. It's, it's destroying the country. No, that's not what's destroying the country. Critical race theory, it's destroying the country. No, it's not destroying the country. There's a lot of things at play that are destroying the country, but that, that, that's, that's not one of them. Your reaction to it, 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 it can, is pretty destructive. And now anytime anyone tries to talk about anything, you know, related to how bad the foundings of this country was, uh, oh, oh, no, it's CRT again. It's just some excuse for you to not have to look at how shitty the beginnings of this country was. But we're also watching what happens when a pretty big chunk of the population is facing homelessness. You know, while at the same time, so many cities across the nation have essentially made it illegal to be homeless. You know, because seeing homeless people hurts businesses' bottom lines. Yeah, there's the sanitary issue as well, but cities should be supplying sanitary services to the public in general. No, the, the real reason why homelessness is illegal is because, you know, it, it hurts businesses. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt businesses, but, uh, you know, I'm, I, I think we should be trying to take care of homeless people. When I say take care of, I mean, you know, supply them their their basic needs you know there, there are a number of places that, that have thankfully started building you know tiny little tiny little homes they're, they're 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 really tiny i mean but they're at least giving people a place to stay you know there's some places that are trying to do something i i, I think that's great i wish there would be more of that but you know in this society you pretty much have to be spending money on a place to live or you're not really part of society. You're less than. And like I already said, you know, in many places, it's illegal to be homeless. So it kind of forces the issue too. Sure, you can stay with friends, but is that friend going to let you use their address as your mailing address, as your actual, you know? I mean, you can't get an ID card without an address. You have to have an address. But tell me more about how free we are in this country. Highest percentage of our population in prison by far than any other country. Look how many things are illegal. Look how many victimless crimes there are. You don't even have the right to your own body. So much of this is trying to legislate morality. Sure, you can say anything you want and you're not going to go to jail for it, provided you're not threatening someone or calling for violence, right? You're free to pursue making money and you're free to own anything but people. Corporations have even more rights than people. They essentially have the right to own people, you know, in this environment. And they want to take away your right to do what you want with what you buy. See the right to repair controversy as an example of this. And they're probably going to get away with it because 
The people that we have in the highest offices of the government are either neoliberals or neocons. They're not going to put a stop to any of this. And let's make no mistake about it, Trump wasn't going to put a stop to any of this either. And I think all of this is going to get much worse. Eventually we're going to find out that the whole property thing wasn't so great. At least not to the extreme that we've taken it. And we'll hopefully figure out a balance to where we can get a reasonable amount of amenities and necessities and enjoyment out of life while not destroying everything around us. While not using and destroying other cultures. At the rate the right wing is blocking anything that could change our current trajectory, the amount of time it will take for us to even significantly try to do anything, anything significant anyway, about how destructive we are, is likely well, well beyond my statistically projected lifetime. Which means by the time we do something about the problem, it will probably be too late. What I can hope for is that we as a society and civilization and the governments that we live under can eventually put together a plan for sustainable living. Like, for instance, the Build Back Better United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. That seems to have a lot of people up in arms. This sort of thing, however it gets organized or labeled or named, is really our only chance if we want to keep our ability generations from now, to have a fulfilling and decent life. I mean, another answer to this could be some sort of horrible disease that wipes out most of humanity, and then the remaining people that are left have a much smaller impact on the planet, you know, and other life. But that obviously just doesn't have a very pleasant ring to it, does it? So it would seem that we should try to do something about this problem. And yeah, I get that the 2030 plan has issues. There are some potentially communistic elements to it. But I don't see anyone else stepping up to the plate to offer better solutions. As I've said before, I don't see the right wing even acknowledging in any way that there's even a problem to begin with. And if you don't acknowledge the problem, there's no way you're going to be able to work on any solutions to it. You know, everything the right wing puts out is some excuse to not do anything about it. You want to argue about whether it's as bad as, as, as people are really saying. Well. Does it, does it really matter whether it's quite as bad? Let's at least try to do something about, well, no, no, we need to define whether it's really as bad. It's just all an excuse to not do anything about it. For supposedly being so good at looking at history and its patterns, right-wingers in this country don't seem to have a grasp on how to build for the future. They seem incapable of establishing new patterns unless someone in their midst that they can look up to, like Trump, you know, can, can make them feel like they've been shown new ideas and it's coming from the right. Oh boy, look, new fresh ideas from the right. Let's worship it. And it just kind of seems the way it's going. You know, the ideas aren't really new and fresh, but, uh, you know, they're presented in a different way. It's repackaged. So look, everyone, he's not a politician. He's a real populist. He's, he's a real patriot. Blind faith. You know, it's mostly because of his personality. You know, he doesn't have any filters. And so, for some reason, and I've seen people say it blatantly, if someone has a strong personality and they're unfiltered, that makes them intelligent. It's just like, uh, no, that's... And they, they make it sound like someone who's, who's timid or shy doesn't have a strong personality, must be kind of stupid. And this is, yeah, what, what do you say to that? But you know, someone with a strong personality that's unfiltered and uh, they make it sound like they have new ideas and they can blatantly show they're on the right, well, you're going to worship them. You know, they, they, the Republicans did this kind of with Reagan, not to the extreme they have with Trump, but they did with this with Reagan. It was creepy then. It's still creepy now. But right-wingers don't seem to have any sort of ideas for new policy. You know, it, it's all just more pushing Christian supremacy and trickle-down economics. You know, they do have one thing that's good, and, and Democrats used to, th used to be for this as well. You know, and that's decent border security. You know, strong borders. It, it, it used to be something we could all agree on, I, but, you know... 
Uh, so the, the Trump derangement syndrome that's out there, oh, because Trump pushes it, it must be fascist and bad. Well, having strong borders doesn't mean fascism. Having strong borders doesn't mean... It just it, it, it's there, There's nothing wrong with strong borders. It makes it better for the people who have come here legally, right? So... But yeah, like I said, the, the only the only good policy the right wing seems to have is strong borders. But people on the right just can't seem to recognize the fascist direction that a lot of this Trump worship is going. You just don't seem to recognize it. You do you, you do you do not put that much faith into a person. You know, and if you say you're patriotic, then it's supposed to be for the whole country, not just for your little clique. You know, and, you know, for the right wing supposedly being so good at looking at supply and demand, they can't seem to fathom the idea of there being limited resources. You know, I'm thinking about the environment and 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 oil and there's no planning. There's no planning on what to do with, with, with any of this. It's just it's just like, no, everything's infinite. We can do everything infinitely. We can continue these patterns infinitely. All of this stuff can be infinite. It's pros it's guaranteed prosperity, and it's like no, it's not. We can see stuff falling apart. Can you can you look at this? Oh no, look look the LGBT. Look what the LGBT and the black community are doing. Look at their look at the activism. Look, they're burning down cities. And it's just a couple. It's a couple blocks of a city, but oh, it's it's the whole city's burning down. I'm not saying the violence and the, the, the all that stuff is a good thing, but it's it's been greatly exaggerated. It's made to sound like it's 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 an entire city. Look out! No, no, it's not. You know, it's kind of funny. Left-wingers get told all the time that all they seem to know how to do is destroy. But when they show their plans for sustainable living and sustainable development, they're told it's communist and it's dismissed outright. While, again, denying that there's a problem that we need to deal with at all. According to the right wing in this country, the only plan that's acceptable is to basically proudly play our instruments on a sinking ship. The sinking ship being unregulated capitalism and ownership and consumerism. While claiming that all the problems are from uh, rainbow people, you know, LGBTQ plus people, and racial activists, and immigrants. People that might not have a cookie cutter viewpoint of what being American is about. Anything that's different than, than traditional families and traditional living is a threat because, you know, you, you can't uh, live in the same space because it, it invalidates your life, you know. If you have to accept other people's lives, it invalidates yours or something like that. That's the, the logic behind it. Yep, we're just supposed to proudly play our instruments on a sinking ship. Well, I don't like that plan very much. How about you? As time goes on, the stakes become higher. What are we going to do? Quite frankly, I wish Joe and Kamala were as far to the left as so many of the right-wing pundits say they are. But that's not the case. They're both neoliberals. They're both warmongers. They're both terrible about border security, especially Kamala. And Joe seems to be mentally slipping away more and more. It's embarrassing, quite frankly. I think it's about time he steps down. But I digress. Thanks for watching.